Hey, lovey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> That's good. Uh, how, I mean, how are you handling all this with this, you know, coronavirus and stuff? Uh, I mean, it's getting pretty hard, but it's not too far out of my comfort zone because I am like a homebody slash right. nurse, so it's like, but yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. So yeah, you're not driving you too crazy, huh? Not nothing too crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, Stella uh, in the Spades, I I just had so much fun with that movie. It was so good. Um, one thing though that did st- stick out with me when watching before I even watched the movie, watching the trailer is man, I don't think we've ever had a high school coming of age film um, with mostly black cast. You got a black <laughs> lead. I was really trying to think. I'm like, we have not had a film like this on this like yeah. level. I mean, you the HBIC of the of the of the boarding school. I'm like, man, I'm yeah. loving this. I mean, were these the kind of things that were sticking out to you when you were reading the script? We were talking with yes. uh, Taisha about the film and all that. Yes, most definitely. For me, I was like, oh my god, wait, okay, black kids at a boarding school like. Yeah. I- seen that and like I need to see that because we don't usually have that much freedom right like do what white kids do with the boarding school freedom so I wanted to see that kind of like take form and then I also love that Sella was definitely taking advantage of all of that freedom away from home yeah definitely because I don't I'm like I didn't feel this way until I got to college. I mean, I went to a public school, but I was like, man, they are really, like, y'all had to side hustles with the selling of the drugs and the alcohol. I was like, man, y'all are getting the full experience. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all are getting the full experience. College for sure. They was living the college life. <laughs> yeah. For yes, yes, at a very yeah. young age. Uh, uh, you of course you play Stella. Um, Stella, she's the the the, the head of the spade. She's the mm-hmm. the head of the school. Basically, you have all this power. People love you, or you know, know you. They love you. They want to be you. Yeah. <laughs> that it girl for them. Um, I feel like a lot of us grew up with somewhat on that like level not not maybe not to as extreme that Sella kind of took it but mm-hmm. some of us like we all went to school with somebody like that did you kind of mm-hmm. base your performance with Sella uh, off of someone you might have known in the past or someone uh that you were familiar with from school uh, not really uh anyone I was familiar with but the feelings I was like emotions I was familiar with more mm-hmm. so because like, I knew that um you know if you look at everything like in the simplicity, everyone has like certain like things that they're made up of. And I feel like Cello was just like made up of like a lot of rage and a lot of frustration yeah. and like mm-hmm. a lot of like, I'd be like, okay, like what is she feeling right now? Like emotionally wise. And like, it would just end up being like a whole bunch of like a collection of like a whole bunch of small little scenes and like those emotions that I had to display in that short time. That I just yeah. Set. <laughs> right yeah yeah I mean that is one thing with Sel. she just never showed when she was you know sad or feeling you know mm-hmm. just really upset she kind of wouldn't show she just really had like a poker face uh, yeah you know, like throughout the film and I'm just like I'm like she just would not open up to anybody um, yeah but then that's where uh Paloma came in and your relationship mm-hmm. kind of with Paloma Sella and Paloma um it's hard to say this I'll give it too much away so I I was, I'm curious of if she went into it as someone who with good intentions to actually have her, okay, like, I see her as somebody who could take, like, my seat, somebody who could be my mm-hmm. successor. Did you think that she came into the situation with good intentions? I'd say that, yeah. Uh, I definitely think Sela had good intentions with Paloma. I also think that, um, I, I just feel like she was desperate, you know, Sela, mm-hmm. she was ready to she wasn't ready to graduate she wasn't ready to kind of give up her power yeah and she couldn't find anybody that like really met her standards until like she saw someone who was kind of re- reminded her of her, younger, her that was a little more vulnerable and didn't have all of the power yet yeah you know so I definitely feel like that's why um they are they do have that relationship that that kind of reflects the future uh, situation too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it was very, I just love like the dynamics between you and Paloma, I mean, with Stella Paloma, <laughs> uh, Celeste O'Connor. I mean, I'm assuming your guys' relationship off camera wasn't as intense as it kind of was on camera. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, prepping for those scenes. I mean, what was the, 
what was the vibe like, you know, between you two, between you and Celeste? It was easy to like play those roles only because we were very vulnerable with each other in real right. life. And we were like, we kept saying like while we were filming, like you, there must be like some cameras around because they definitely are hang out and they're saying that it's work but it's not like we're really just hanging out yeah so (laughs) so it was kind of like that so like just working with her it was just like easy because like uh like I'll just be like yeah so this is what I'm thinking like for the scene and she'll like come to me and like we both respect each other's like um views and like how like where we're coming from so it just made everything so lovely and also what I loved about the cast in Mm -hmm. this is like the relationships that you see on like on the screen it's kind of like that on the other side of the spectrum in like real life um so like me not me Sella and Maxie they were supposed yeah. to be like these lifelong friends kind yeah. of like almost like sister uh they know each other she trusts him and it was kind of easy for me and Jarrell to play that because me and Jarrell grew up in the Bronx like one train stop away from each other like we kind of had the same childhood growing up and it was kind of easy to relate to each other and then celeste like coming from um maryland and kind of just trying to like see what this like fast-paced new york lifestyle mm-hmm. humor is like well it was it kind of just translated really well <laughs> i'm glad you brought in maxi because it, it it did come off as you guys have known each other your whole lives in the film uh with Stella and maxi's relationship mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, it's just a matter of, is Sella even even capable of having a true relationship with someone, friends, boyfriend, you know, whatever it is. is does it, I mean, is she able, is she capable of that? Is she, do she even want that? Or I, does she always keep people at a I think Sella, uh, I think Sella's um, power hungry self is not capable of that because yeah. everyone is disposable. Mm-hmm. I feel like Sella at her awakened self definitely wants those relationships i just feel like she wanted those people around her like she wanted maxi and she wanted paloma but it was just a matter of like she can't help but to be who she is and sometimes that's going to drive people away <laughs> right and i think mm-hmm. a lot of what the reason Stella kind of what is the way she is at school is because of the relationship she had with her mother um mm-hmm. you don't you don't have many scenes with your mom in the film but the but when you do you can feel the tension you can feel yeah. Um, her mom doesn't really know her. She did, it doesn't seem like she cared to know what she wants in her it's like future. Whole shit. Like you see a whole yes. different like, Stella. Like yeah, <laughs> exactly. You see Stella at school. She's this powerful woman who just everyone is a, like below her, and then she gets around mm-hmm. her mom, and it's just an instant flip. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. Just talk about kind of that mindset and transitioning into that with doing those scenes with your mom, who was played by Gina Torres, and mm-hmm. you know with doing your scenes at school at Hardwell. Yeah, I definitely loved um, having like that storyline because it made so much sense, you know, like the way her mother kind of treated her was how she kind of had the mindset to treat everyone else. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was, I love that because it was like, I don't know, I just love multi-dimensional characters. Yeah the reason behind their actions instead of like just judging them like I love seeing it oh because yeah. I wouldn't say necessarily sell a, I mean the word I've been throwing around lately with a lot of these characters they're misunderstood not yeah. necessarily yeah. evil or or me there's yeah. a lot going on you know at home in their mind whatever the situation is I don't think people are as evil because they want to be there's a situation I think her relationship with her mom has a lot to do with how she treats people yeah. as well, her peers yeah I feel like she was definitely just doing the best with what she knew <laughs> yeah. yeah like I'm really re- just trying to, like make it <laughs> yeah i was so invested in her i was like i wonder how like she is <laughs> 10 years from now like i wonder yeah like, oh, 10 years. What, her, what her job is what I she could be like, doing yeah. a powerhouse like maybe yeah her- <laughs> for sure she definitely ran like a fortune 500 company like cussing everybody out yeah. and <laughs> like, it because yeah <laughs> Has, like lofts around yeah <laughs> yeah I, like i was so invested the whole time in these in the characters and these people and i just i love the film i'm curious she also is a loner so i know during this time she'll probably really appreciate being like in the house not messing with nobody not no one messing yeah. with her but i just want you i want <laughs> you to tell me like for Sella, what would be her quarantine playlist like what songs would she be like listening to at home right now in her own lay in her own vibe 
Mm, I, okay, Sella is definitely listening to Rihanna. Oh, like, yeah, she's listening to Anti like on repeat. Uh huh. Also listening to like old school songs like Benny King and like Sam Cooke. But like yeah, she's yeah. also, but I feel like Sella would also. I don't know. Probably now, like in 2020, because mm. that movie did take place in like the early 2000s. Now that it's 2020 and she's from Philly, mm. definitely like any Philly artist, Meek Mill, like yeah. All those, <laughs> all I feel those like you've thought about this. <laughs> well, I de- I do think about music a lot, like with yeah. my characters. Like whenever I um, audition for a role and I really want that role, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. I'm making a playlist for this character right now. So I have a playlist for like every character I've ever played and I just like put it in and I'm like <laughs> so, yeah. Are you so so you're just like don't wait when you're listening to your music on Sarah, you're like just don't don't bother me right now. I'm hold on, I'm in my I'm I'm getting in my zone. As long as it's just on, like it just has oh, to okay. like on, you know, like I just have to like start getting into like the vibe and then I'll just like feel like that energy of like the character. Okay. But, like it could be like while I'm cooking breakfast or while mm-hmm. I'm chilling with my fam or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the last thing that I have really is um, I do this thing called three words. So if you just describe the movie in three words, it could be a sentence, like angry adjectives, whatever, just three words mm. to describe Scylla and the Spades. This is a good one. This is a good one. (laughs) (laughs) It's tough. I know because I tried to do it myself, but I couldn't do it. (laughs) It is black. Yes. It is empowering. Yes. And it is enlightening. Yeah. I like that. (laughs) I like that. Those are three good ones. (laughs) I love yeah. you. You're incredible. That was hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like <laughs> the music one was good. And then you're like the three words. You was like, oh, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> love you. You're incredible. You're amazing in this film, really. Um, I mean, I'm telling everybody about it. I'm telling everyone's excited. A lot of my family are excited to see it. Um, so yeah, we're I'm excited for your future too. I know you you're just kind of getting going a little bit. So I'm excited to see what happens to you in the future. And Me congrats too. with everything with green leaf and all that man. and yeah. can't wait to see more stuff from you thank you <laughs> so i hope you enjoy Bye. your day thank you so much you too thank you for talking with me it was awesome anytime thank you <laughs> have a good one